Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the channel. It is a beautiful day out here, and today we will be doing my owner's review on my 2023 Lowrider S. Let's get to it. So just to preface this video, um, I've put on about 1,300 kilometers or, or just over 800 miles on this bike thus far. And it's obviously not stock as it's my personal ride and I never keep a bike uh, bone stock. Um, the bike's a stage one with Vance and Heinz exhaust, 16 inch apes, forward controls and uh, Memphis shade sunscreen. Uh, so I won't be boring you with endless specs and figures as, you know, there's already been plenty of videos and uh, articles written laying all those out. Uh, but I will be going through the bike and uh, pointing out what I feel are pretty much the most uh, important aspects that I've found with the bike so far. Um, now, if you feel that I've missed an area or you have any questions you'd like answered leave them in the comments below and i'll try to answer them uh, to the best of my ability um, also just wanted to point this out um, you know this channel is made by me and me alone um, you know i'm not sponsored um, and i you know i do it on my own so i don't have any help and quite honestly to be honest uh, that probably shows at times but um if you do wish to support the channel, you know, uh, please subscribe. And the best thing about subscribing to this channel is that unlike most things these days, uh, it won't cost you anything. But anyway, enjoy. So there she is, ladies and gentlemen, 2023 Lowrider S in vivid black. Uh, it also comes in the white sand pearl. However, uh, I went with the vivid black just because the engine is already blacked out. Uh, so I went with that. Uh, if you go with the white sand pearl, you're looking at about another 650 bucks added on to the price. Uh, that's Canadian, of course, and in Canada, you're looking at about 24,000 to start off with this bike. Now, it is a blacked out bike, as you can see. However, they do have certain things such as chrome levers and chrome pushrod covers, which I don't quite understand why you would have a blacked out engine and have these little bits of chrome but I suppose Harley might want to make a little bit of extra money off it. And if anybody else can come up with another reason why they would do it, well, let me know. So let's get to the star of the show on this bike. And that is the 117 Milwaukee 8. As you can see, it has the big heavy breather on the front, which sticks out, which kinds of gets a little bit in the way of those pegs. Uh, but this engine puts out, uh, depending on which specs you're looking at, about 103 to 105 horsepower and about 125 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I said in a previous video, um, actually before I got done the break-in period, that this bike didn't really have a big uh, boost in power. And that is true if you're just going and booting around town. But I can tell you, when you get this thing out on the road, it is much, much more noticeable. Uh, quite a bit more than the fat boy I had. Um, and it, it, is, it is very impressive how fast uh, uh, this bike gets up to speed. Now, shifting on this bike, as you can see, I've got the forward controls on here. Uh, it does come stock 
with the mid controls, which actually sit quite high. Uh, my knees would have been up over the steering, or sorry, over the uh, gas tank. Um, and I've always liked just the forward controls. I've had no issue with them. Uh, I will say this bike uh, shifts a little bit nicer than the fat boy I had before. Um, of course, it's the regular six gears, uh, and I can find neutral quite a bit better. Uh, so seating position on this bike with those mid controls is much more aggressive. Uh, it's not quite as aggressive with those forwards. And I will say something about the seat. Now, the seat on this bike is very, very basic. There's not much to it. Um, however, I will say this is probably the most comfortable stock Harley seat I have ever sat on and now I know that's probably not saying a lot because it's a stock seat but it's so good uh, I am not even interested in changing it out and I have done some day trips on this bike and this is the only seat I think I can say my butt never did get sore on now if we're talking about wheels let's talk about the front to start with course we've got the nice bronze rims these are scorchers michelin scorchers 110 90s b19s and we have the dual disc brakes on the front now to be honest with you uh, i feel like the dual discs a little bit uh, overkill on the front of this bike coming around to the back we have the nice bronze rims, of course. We have the uh, only the one disc brake on this side. 180s, 70s, B16s. Now, I did say that I thought that the, the front of the bike was a bit of overkill. However, um, these back brakes almost feel a little soft. So actually having the dual disc on the front is actually a pretty good idea. Although I haven't had uh, much issue with, uh, with any braking on really any Harley, to be honest with you. Now lighting on this bike, just the regular Harley lighting, nothing fancy. Bullet signals, front and back. A lot of people like to change out the lighting on these bikes. Uh, for me, honestly, I've rode this bike in the dark and I had no problem at all with any of the lighting. Uh, it's never been an issue, so it's doubtful I'm going to change anything other than maybe uh, I could almost see uh, going with uh, some smoked lenses in the future, maybe. So let's talk about the controls. They're pretty much the regular controls Harley has. You've got your kill switch, your ignition, start, hazards. You've got your signals on this side. We come over here. You've got your lights. You've got your horn, your toggle. Again, you've got your, uh, your signal and your cruise control, which is actually nice to have. I have never had actual cruise control on a bike. I've had a throttle lock, but never the actual cruise control. Now, I said this was the, uh, the toggle switch, and it toggles through your gauge. Now, the gauges on this bike, or the gauge, was moved a couple years back because it used to have two gauges sitting right here on the dash of the tank. It no longer has that. You have just a nice, smooth dash here. You have your little emblem here. But let's turn this guy on. How well that shows up on camera I'm not too sure but if we toggle through if you can see it we are on the mileage as we speak and we've got our trip a trip B now we have our range and that is how many kilometers you have left uh, in your tank in your gas tank basically how far you can go on this tank of gas we have our clock, which you see I haven't set, our RPMs, and again, back to our mileage. 
Now another thing I like about this bike is the gas tank. I usually like um, the badging. Uh, this emblem, I really like it. It's that smooth emblem, nothing sticking out. Kind of like uh, reminiscent of the older bikes. I like the old Fat Boy when it had the emblem like that and not the badge sticking out. I like the smooth dash. I'm not a fan of the gauges being on here. Um, apparently they were moved because uh, some riders did not like having to look down to see their gauge. Uh, now that was never an issue for me but just starting to wear a full face helmet I can see why that why that would be. Uh, I actually don't mind just having the one gas cap. A lot of times they went with the two just to keep the symmetry but it doesn't bother me at all. It's a very nice sleek design. Now the handling on this bike is quite frankly superb as far as I'm concerned, especially with the ape hangers which are very very divisive. You either love them or you hate them and most people tend to hate them. But this bike cruises around corners no problem at all. Excellent lean angle. Uh, it's also a little bit lighter than the Fat Boy I had. This comes in about somewhere around that uh, 680 pounds I believe in operating weight. Uh, but the suspension is another reason it handles so well. You have the inverted forks on the front, and I know a lot of people talk about the back uh, suspension, or the rear suspension, but the first thing I noticed was how good the front was. But on the back, you have a mono shock, which is located under the seat. And the reason it is better than some is because this shock has about an inch more travel. I believe it's the shock off the um, Heritage. And you can see it sits up a little higher in the back end. It sits about, I think it's about 5.7, 5.8 uh, for ground clearance. But it's just excellent suspension and the smoothest ride I've had uh, on, on any uh, Harley with stock suspension. Now obviously this is not the stock exhaust, these are Vance and Hines, uh, big radius, two into two, um, and uh, the suspension that usually comes on this bike is kind of that shotgun exhaust, kind of like the Fat Boy had, but uh, I'm sure some of you might be wondering what this uh, bike sounds like, so I'll start it up here and uh, let you guys have a listen. So I mean, overall guys, I really don't have really any real complaints with this bike. Uh, I did have a Fat Boy before this and uh, it did take a little bit of getting used to. The Fat Boy obviously, the bigger tires, a little bit heavier, uh, getting used to the foot pegs, that was something else. Uh, but really. I am very satisfied with the purchase. Some people have asked me, they've said, well, you know, do you miss that fat boy? And I gotta say at this point, not really. Um, I feel pretty good about this bike, especially when you get out on the highway and you feel that get up and go and that extra pull that it has, uh, especially with the suspension and the handling, it glides around corners a lot better than that fat boy did before. Um, it's just a very, very all-around good bike. Um, excellent soft tail, excellent cruiser. Um, you can't go wrong with it, really. Um, and like I say, I really don't have any complaints with it. It's, it's, uh, it operates fantastic, and uh, like I say, I'm, I'm uh, glad I made the purchase. Um, now, the actual purchasing experience may be a little bit different, but... I gotta say, I'm really enjoying this bike. Uh, so if you're thinking of getting a Lowrider S, take it for a spin, and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. But anyway, that's it for today, guys. Uh, 
leave your comments if you like and uh, please subscribe we're on the march to a thousand and the best thing about subscribing to this channel doesn't cost you anything but anyway that's it for now hope you guys enjoy your day and we'll see you later